Hey you all, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to walk myself through a real shadow work process specifically that is real from my own journey. And you're going to have an examples for, for prompts that you can use to for your own journey. This shadow work thing that I'm gonna work through in this video is something that you can do that is available for you to do in any area of life for, from career to relationships to a pattern that you're noticing in your life or family for whatever it may be. And I do have a really cool surprise at the end for you in order for you to actually being able to go into this work for yourself and even deeper. So make sure to watch until the end because it's really freaking good. This is from my shadow work workbook. The contents are part one, what is shadow work? Part two, benefits of shadow work. Part three, the power of video journaling. Part Four, become aware of your shadows. Part five, inner child work. Part six, triggers. And part seven, additional prompts for video journaling. So I'm gonna start with become aware of your shadows. Okay, find a quiet space where you won't be dis uh, disturbed for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Have a journal or recording device handy. Identify a situation that triggers an intense emotional reaction, anger, jealousy, fear, etc. Write or talk about this situation in details. So what's been coming up for me is grief around letting go of my mom. When I say letting go of my mom, what I mean is I've been feeling this unconscious responsibility that I have for her. I know she's my mom, but in the past few years, I felt like more like I'm her mom with the way that I was acting. And I realized that she created this prison for herself with the religion that she's subscribing to that has a lot of like fear-based stuff that has disempowerment messages, a lot of control. And she tried to control me with this religion of hers. And what happens when I'm interacting with her, I feel like it's like a trap and I fall into this trap and then I mirror the same exact thing. And I try to control her with my stuff, with, I, with my truth and what I believe in. Beautiful thing I heard today. The difference between control and power is control that you try to control someone else to be a certain way or believe a certain thing and power is when you're in your authentic power and you're almost like activate the other person to step into their power and we're just like being in our power together and the thing that i've been that's been coming up for me lately on my journey around my mom is how she created this prison that she's then trying to put me in her prison, of course, everything is unconscious. Of course, everything is happening like not consciously, right? But because she's my mom, we have this like very strong karmic bond, like very strong connection, like that there's a reason why I chose her in this lifetime. And there is something here for me to learn and something for her, but that's not on me, what she's going to learn from it or not. I'm sure she learned a lot from me, but what I, what I'm getting to is this place where in order for me to step into my own authenticity and my own truth and my own power, I have to, I have to be okay with letting her, her go. And there's a lot of grief in it because, because I, I wasn't even aware of it, but like, this is, this is when I was like going into it. I found this thing on my shadows. Like I didn't even know that I feel so much responsibility for her and I don't want to like leave her in the dark. I want to take her with me. I want to bring her to where I'm going, but 
the reality is, is what's happening in the meantime is that I am continuing to play small because of her story, because of the story that, that was put onto me with where I came from. And maybe it's like a generational thing, but I realize that I have to be okay with letting her go. And so there's a lot of grief in the letting her go because I always tried to fight for our relationship, even though I wasn't necessarily like in contact with her, you know, like obviously growing up, we were very like, we butt heads a lot and we didn't get along to say the least. And what I realized too, is that the butt, butt, butting heads, it's some type of connection because butt heads, like, that type of thing it's it's still better than nothing it's still there's some type type of connection and i realized that me and her were so similar and there was like such a huge mirror like when she does what she does i go into doing what she does exactly but totally like the opposite like in a totally different way and so i'm learning that and there's a lot of grief in like letting her go and like just giving up of being responsible for her because yes, she's my mom, but I've been acting as if it's like the opposite in a way because when I really connect with her, I see her face, I can see her inner child and I like, I feel responsible. I want to, I want to take care of her and I want to, I want to help her. But the thing is that she's not willing to receive anything from me because of where I'm at, because of she believes in something totally different. She's in a, in a very extreme Orthodox cult and she's not willing to take anything from me. So when I tell her how much I love her and how much I, I send her so much love and how much I'm I'm happy and I'm, you know, I have this amazing life. Like she can't even hear me. She can't even hear what I'm saying to her. Um, and so there was a lot of grief that in it because I feel like, I feel like it's like saying goodbye to the relationship that, that I was attached to that, that I was fantasizing about, but it's not happening it's not going to happen at least as of now and there's a lot of grief in knowing that I'm never gonna receive what I wanted from her or what I want from her as my mom or as someone that's close to me you know close to my heart and someone that's really important for me even further from that is like realizing that I'm not going to have any relationship with her that I want now. And like knowing that the only time that I'm going to have the relationship that I was hoping to have with her is going to be after she's going to leave this world. She's going to leave her physical form. Then I'm going to be able to have a relationship with her that I'm now not able to have a relationship. So all of that brings up a lot of grief in my chest and in my throat. Ask yourself the following questions. What about this situation makes me uncomfortable? The thing that makes me uncomfortable is the letting go part. Like it's really hard to let go. Like to fully like disconnect and say, okay, this is, this is not working. How do I typically react when this happens? The way I react is like, I automatically think that I have this thing in me and like, I've, I've done a lot of work around it. So it's like way less now, but there's like this thing in me that's like very harsh or very like, Come on, you have to, you have to do it. If you want to step into, if you want to fully step into your power and to fully em embody your authenticity and your truth, you have to, you have to like let this thing go. 
the way it impacts me is that it feels unsafe for me. It feels, if it, there's like this part of me that's like trying to make it happen like fast, oh, you have to get it down. And it's like very aggressive. And it's like this way that I've been kind of used to for many years. But now, I mean, not now, like in the past few months, I got to this place of my journey that that doesn't work anymore. And like, just to give myself the space and the, um, and the time and like taking it slow and like trusting that it's going to happen. And I'm on this journey and like, I don't need to do it at a certain pace or I, I don't have to do it in a certain way or just kind of like, because the way I react to it when it comes up, it's like, it makes me feel unsafe. It makes my little girl feel unsafe. She doesn't feel safe when I'm being forced to do something fast that I'm not ready to do, that it's hard, that it takes time. I can't just like, okay, fine. Like you're, you, you know, you go, it's like, it's like not, it's not a healthy way to treat my little girl, to treat myself really, because this way I notice in this pattern in the past that in this pattern, I really minimize things. It's like this like really big thing or like big thing that I'm working through, like a big emotion or big trauma. And that part that like is rushing or like, come on, get it done. You have to do it faster because you have to get to a certain place faster. That part is a wounded part that doesn't feel enough. And, and when that part is coming online, there's a sense like of unsafety for my little girl. Yeah. So the next question is, is there a pattern in my life where this type of situation repeats itself? Definitely. This pattern has been repeating it. I have chills because it has been repeating itself literally in every area in my life. I mean, I think the first, I mean, just like thinking about everything I've done, you know, like leaving Israel, you know, at, when I was 21 or join the army or, you know, even the sexual trauma that I was going through. There was never really like really sitting with it. Everything was kind of like moving from this to the next thing. And like, okay, fine, that happened. Next. What's next? What's next? Like, it's like not really sitting with things, like feeling into things, slowing down, really letting the feeling being felt in my body, like really noticing like what it brings up. And really, so I, I do have to say that I feel like this pattern helped me in a lot of areas in my life because the place that it was positive for me for my journey is the places where I don't know if I would be where I'm at today if 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 without this pattern and I'm saying it to really like emphasize the fact that this pattern was and is part of my journey it's not separate. It's not like, oh, if I didn't have this pattern, my life would be perfect because the reality is that this pattern actually made me who I am. So I'm super thankful for this pattern because I don't feel like, yeah, I, I just like couldn't imagine like doing everything so seamlessly, like leaving my parents' house when I was 14 or moving to the U S with $30 in my pocket. And you know, just leaving my abusive relationship, just leaving without thinking twice. Like, so I definitely see how this pattern came into, um, in a positive way into my life, but where I'm at now in the, in my journey is like, and, and again, I've been working on this pattern for the past few months or a few years, just like kind of, it's kind of been evolving in different ways. Cause I kind of see it like in different areas of my life. So in the beginning I was noticing how this pattern coming into play with my fitness and nutrition like oh i have to do it's like it's like i talked about it with another video like i talked about it in another youtube video uh where i basically share that the underlying thing underneath this pattern is like this sense of not enoughness like not being enough like never it's never enough and like I always have to do more or I always have to move on to the next thing to be enough. So there's never really like really being enough in the present moment. I talk about it a lot and I will talk about it a lot more 
but it's like the underlying thing is like not feeling enough in in the present moment and like what what that causes is always to you know you know you you have to do this fast so so you know you can work on yourself faster so you can get to this place where you embodying your your true self or you have you know, you're in your power all these things but it's like where it's coming from like it's almost like the image i see is like the flame of the of the pot you know like what's what's in the bottom that's like triggering it is like this unhealthy pattern that's like happening so long answer to the question what belief do i have about myself or others that is being triggered here so like i said i think again the i kind of went to it already the beliefs i have about myself in this case is the not feeling enough in the present moment so that's like a big thing that i've been working on in the past in the past few months that there is like an underlying belief of not being enough and i do have a feeling and a sense that there is a lot of shame underneath and i'm actually going to share it because i've done this process one time um, a few months ago where i was noticing this pattern of like like this this not enoughness place that i could feel it in my stomach like a little bit below my solar plexus and if you know the soul the quote unquote demon of the solar plexus is is shame is is uh i am bad that's like the messages because because the guilt which is in the sacral chakra is like i did something bad so there's that relational piece so that's like more sacral chakra which there's that one-on-one relationships but solo plexus is my like my sense of self our identity in the world our personal power self-esteem self-worth all of that so the the shame is the quote-unquote demon of this energy center and so i could feel the physical sensation underneath my solo plexus and i tried to someone was actually guiding guiding me through this process and i could feel like this shame it felt like a like a seed of a popcorn that's like burnt it was covered with like almost like a placenta type like texture thing that was a little bit slightly blue and inside it was black like super hard like it's burnt and around it it looked like a the pit of apricot the the pit of the apricot was like like around it actually i started from like the outside and then went to the inside and in this process i could feel you know i felt the shame that was like the the pit in my stomach and in the process this person that like my friend that was guiding me through it like he was kind of guiding me to okay now feel your heart and what does it feel like or think about someone who you truly love i thought about i thought about my niece and i could feel my heart and it was like a blue diamond that's like pure energy that you can kind of put your hand through it and then it started with the heart was maybe at three and the pit was around seven and then he asked me to focus on the heart and not necessarily treating the pit as if i'm trying to fix it or change it but send love from my heart to the pit and with the process it was a long process but slowly the heart was growing and growing and growing and it got to four six seven eight and then at some point it was like you know it was the size of like around like my aura like my body and then eventually got into i could i couldn't feel any edges to to my heart and it was like all the rainbows of colors and it felt like a sacred geometry and like i could i couldn't see i couldn't feel like the edges meaning i was part of the universal unconditional love uh and then slowly the the shame was like going smaller and smaller and smaller until it became like the actual seed became a like a smoke it was like like dark gray smoke and then it turned to like white smoke and then the smoke transmuted into a flower and what was coming up earlier was that this shame was something that was like literally was transferred to me in in my mother's womb like that that was coming from my mother which makes sense because i always felt like there's there's a lot of shame you know in in the way that she became religious and 
you know, I do feel a lot of like a lot of people that become religious, especially if it's like so extreme. Most of the times, not always, but most of the times it comes from a, a, a deep place of, of shame. Like I've, I've done something bad. I need to fix myself. I need to be different. I need to please God and I need to, you know, to do all these things. So that's coming from a place of shame. And so I don't know how far back it goes. I believe it is a generational thing that's been kind of passed down from generations to generations. But again, like the awareness is number one, like that's the first step. And so if someone doesn't have even the awareness of like what's actually happening in, in themselves and like what is going on within their inner world, like they can't really work with any of these things. Cause number one thing is you have to be aware of what's happening. So I was kind of realizing like, oh, the way I approach my work or the way, the way I approach a lot of situation is from that place of shame. Cause instead of having my personal power is that place of shame that I've been carrying. That's not even mine. That's like being passed down to me. So later this smoke was able to, it was tra transmute into this flower that was like pink and yellow with like black dots in the middle. And the, the flower was, was in the lower left side of my, of my belly, kind of like in between my sacral chakra and solar plexus. And I asked the flower, like, how can I support you? And I felt like the flower wanted me to help, to help it to come, come up to my, and sit like this, like straight up to my solar plexus. So I helped it. I helped it. And then there was a, like a few other things that were coming up, like, I saw like this golden lion with like crown that kind of symbolized like courage, which all of these things are solar plexus. It's like very, very, that's the characteristics of like solar plexus, like your personal power, courage, willpower. It's like very powerful type of energy center. Transmutation is like my, <laughs> that's like my thing. I love transmuting energies and transmuting parts within us. And I believe we can all do it. But, um, but that's kind of like the, the process that was kind of sitting. And now that I'm thinking about it, it's like totally makes sense that all of this is coming up lately because it, it's all connected. It's all, it's like one thing. I mean, this thing that I'm talking about probably started like when I started to become aware of it was probably around like five years ago, the first seed, like that was the f first seed. And then every single part on the journey is kind of like connects to more and more parts and it kind of becomes this like you know the bigger picture last question here is how might this situation reflect a part of me that i have not fully accepted oh i'm gonna have to feel into this now mm, okay yeah what's coming up oh i have chills what's coming up for me is this part of me that's like rushed, like always, like, you know, you have to go fast. This part of me, I haven't fully accepted. And I'm noticing this, always when I'm like noticing this part is like, okay, I'm seeing you, you're in my shadows, but like here, I'm seeing you, you're over here. But then, I haven't like, so I, I brought, I gave a lot of attention to this part of me and like kind of like trying to relax it, but I don't feel like I fully accepted this part of myself. So I'm like noticing like my awareness kind of becomes wider and like, I'm noticing like the question that comes up is like, how can I, how can I accept this part of myself? How can I accept this part of myself? So what's coming up for me is like, I'm trying to like imagine like this part of me as a little kid. And the image that I'm seeing is that how much my little girl, how much like she was rushed and she didn't have space and she was like, you know, she didn't have like space to really be in for a second. So I can really see this image of like how this same behavior was being toward this part of me. 
And that behavior is what created this part because that's how the part, this part of me just like learned because when, when we are little kids, it's like we are, we're learning in, in this, like we just learn what, what we were being taught. And if this is what you're teaching me, if this is what I'm learning from my environment, from my parents and from the, the religion that I'm in and from my community that I'm in, if that's all I learn, how can I even know otherwise? So that's where I feel a lot of empathy and compassion towards this part. And I'm just like seeing this like little girl that's like being so like rushed and what's coming up for me is just like sitting down with her, like sitting in front of her, looking into her eyes, holding her hands and just breathing with her. Slowly. Yeah, so like what's coming up is slowing down, like really take her hands and slow down with her and breathe with her. I'm not doing it to try to fix or change that part, but, but to hold a container for this part, to just like, it's okay, we're here, it's okay. I'm here with you and it makes sense. It makes sense that you're feeling this rushness within you because this is what you learned. So it makes sense that this is all you know what to do. That feels, that feels really, I feel like it anchored, like being anchored in my body feels kind of good. I feel a lot of energy in my chest. Just kind of like, slowing down like it's nothing really fancy but just like breathing and just slowing down and even if she's still in panic and like oh my god i have to do this i have to i have to rush 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 like i'm still here just holding that holding holding her in it holding her in it and just giving her space and just like providing that safe container providing that safe space of slowness the last piece of this part become aware of your shadows is reflect on your answers and notice any patterns recur or recurring themes these could be aspects of your shadows so now that i've done this like this is this part and after this part of become aware of your shadows we have the inner child healing which is a lot of like inner child work, which I've, I've done is really, really powerful with an inner child meditation. And then there is uh, what are triggers. I know it's like the opposite. Uh, and then trigger exploration exercise, like how to work with triggers, because the way I like to look at triggers is really, really powerful. Triggers are really like a gold. If we know how to like take them and, you know, like transform them, it's amazing. And then we have like um, prompts for further shadow exploration. So, so these prompts are more like general exploration. And then we have like the checklist of the shadow work workbook checklist. There's a little bit surprise at the end. So this is the um, shadow work workbook. And if you want to grab your copy of this, and it's again, what I just went through in this video it's just one part of the shadow work workbook so if you want to grab the workbook check out the links in the description below and it goes really deep and this is how actually i would like you to invite you to do it you can also use a regular video like journaling like writing it down but doing it like this in a video is really powerful and then you can take the video and you can put it in your google drive or you can put it on YouTube on private. You don't have to post it like I do, but you can also put it in like some folder in your phone if you have enough space, but you just put it somewhere. And then 
when you continue this work, when you continue to go deeper within yourself, you can always literally just turn on the camera and just start talking about your process. And the same, like the same thing, the same exact guidance and like steps, you can use it for a lot of different, different things that are coming up in your life. So now, you know, this is what I was working with. And another time I can do the exact same thing, exact same, like, steps totally different area in my life so again it's in the description below there's a lot there's a lot in this one there's a lot here that you know that can be a really powerful tool for you for your own journey with shadow work inner child healing and uh, triggers that's the main thing and to kind of like bring our, all of our pieces back to ourselves so i just wanted to kind of hop in and share this like one part from the workbook and and how you can kind of take it into your own world and dealing with like your own thing that you're working with whether it's around relationships around career around a specific trauma that you went through around a specific pattern that you're noticing in your life it could be literally anything let me know in the com in the comments below if you have any questions if you have any feedback to share if you want to if, you, if you're not sure about anything I would love to hear from you and thank you for listening to me. Thank you for tuning in. Please do subscribe and share it with your friends if you found it helpful. I do want to share also that this process that I just went through is 100% real. Like this is, this is real. This is like real, as real as it gets. Like this is from my own journey and what I'm going through right now on my journey. There is a lot that is still forming, but I am acknowledging and realizing like the fact of that taking it slow and letting myself trust the process that is already happening that i'm already in it slowing down 